the universe is an enormous place. Uh, you know, it's 14 billion light years across. Uh, one single light year is enormous. Uh, it's bigger than the solar system by uh, more than a factor of a thousand. Um, and it's enormous in time. We've got 14 billion years of history to figure out. And here we are, you know, on this uh, third rock uh, from the sun, and we've got to try to figure this out. So the Fermi Institute brought together uh, astronomers, it brought together physicists to answer these questions like, what is the dark matter? How did the universe begin? Uh, why is the universe speeding up? Uh, where did the structure of the universe come from? What is the structure of the universe? Uh, can we learn something about the universe's beginning that will shed light on the deep mysteries of the laws of physics and the elementary particles? And so the culture here was just the right kind of, uh, you know, it was the miracle grow for uh, cosmology and particle physics. I don't ever remember a discussion of, well, you know, should we hire this guy in the astronomy department or the physics department? I mean, is this really astronomy or is it really physics? It was always, boy, this is really great science. Forefront science is improvisational. And so you need someone to say, well, okay, yeah, okay, I see your idea there, but uh, can you elaborate or couldn't it be this way? And so the dialogue is really important. And the dialogue is important not just with other theorists, that's important, but with the experimentalists who have a cold, hard view of reality. And uh, it's important to have that because the most beautiful idea is not always right. Um, in theoretical physics, uh, the graveyard is littered with beautiful ideas murdered by uh, ugly facts. So uh, the theorists were really taken with inflation. Uh, the idea that the universe uh, in its youth went through an enormous growth spurt. So a bunch of us sat down and said, okay, you know, um, how would you test this idea? Um, and so we focused on three things at the urging of the experimental colleagues. Number one, uh, it predicts that the universe is uncurved or flat. Number two, it predicts a particular pattern of hot and cold spots in the cosmic microwave background. And number three, it predicts that there are gravity waves left over from the early universe. So we focused in on those three and then worked very hard to sharpen those predictions, to make them testable, and at the same time telling our experimental colleagues, you know, uh, if you can show us the universe isn't flat, you've ruled out inflation. And so that means you're smarter than uh, the theorists. So here we were trying to figure out uh, a problem with inflation. Uh, inflation says that we have an uncurved universe. An uncurved universe, its total density is equal to the critical density, and we were coming up two-thirds short. And so a bunch of us uh, theorists said, gee, you know, we really like this idea of inflation. Maybe, maybe the universe has some really weird stuff in it, vacuum energy. And if it did, the way you'd know it is the uh, expansion of the universe should be speeding up. And so uh, we postulated this idea to save inflation. Guess what? Uh, the measurements uh, made of the expansion of the universe, everyone expected it to be slowing down, uh, unless this crazy, stupid idea that the uh, universe is filled with uh, vacuum energy uh, is true. The universe is really speeding up. In this revolution that we're in, uh, one of the most amazing ideas, but not the most amazing idea, is that while we're made of star stuff, uh, the universe is not. That it's made of a new form of matter that we call dark matter. And that idea goes back some 70 years to uh, Fritz Wicke. He showed that clusters of galaxies uh, could not be held together by the collective gravity of their stars that uh, what was holding them together must not be emitting light, and he called it dark matter. Here at Chicago, um, we uh, focused on what was an extremely radical idea, which was that the dark matter is a new form of matter, uh, that it's not made out of the stuff that you and I are made out of, the elements in the periodic table, or neutrons and protons, or even quarks. But you can't just say, well, it's a new form of matter. You have to have, well, what new form? And so uh, we now have uh, three candidates, uh, neutrinos, uh, axions, and neutralinos. 
Uh, neutrinos are particles that actually exist. And the issue is, how much do they weigh? And uh, Dave Schramm was a big proponent of neutrinos must weigh enough to be the dark matter. Well, we now know that he was partly right. They account for uh, about 1% of the dark matter. So it's a proof of principle. And we're pinning our hopes on the axion and the neutralino. And so these are new elementary particles. Uh, the neutralino, in particular, is one that would weigh about 100 times what the proton is. It's a particle that we could hope to detect. Um, we could hope to detect the neutralinos that are the uh, dark matter in our own galaxy by very sensitive detectors. We can also hope to produce them at an accelerator like Fermilab. And so that's where we are now. Uh, the conservative hypothesis, uh, which is kind of scary because in the 1980s people said, well, you know, that's a great story. That's a great fairy tale that the universe is made of something other than what we're made out of. Uh, that's now the conservative hypothesis, and we're uh, ready to test it. So if you ask me to give a, a status report on where we stand in cosmology, uh, what I'm reminded of is, uh, you know, the six blind men and the elephant. And so we're kind of the uh, six blind cosmologists in the universe. So we've all reported back, and so we've reported back there's this dark matter, there's this dark energy, uh, there's the universe speeding up, there's the quark soup at the beginning, uh, there's evidence for a gigantic... Uh, uh, burst of expansion early on that we call inflation. Uh, neutrinos have mass, and they're some of the dark matter. And so we've identified the basic features of the universe, but we now need someone to tell us. We need some smart young mind to come along and say, uh, it's an elephant. Uh, we need a coherent framework. So we, we know a lot about the universe, and that's extremely satisfying. But we also, we also realize that we have much to understand. And so that's what I'm going to do for uh, the rest of my time at Chicago, is to try to sort out this picture. <laughs>